Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, today we are going to continue with the book club on the anatomy for diagnostic imaging, the uh, Ryan for the primary uh, book club. Uh, last week we reached, uh, we were talking about the chest and we reached the pulmonary artery. I think you can continue now. Good morning everyone. We will start with the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries are the arms of the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is approximately five centimeter long. It begins at the pulmonary valve and it is covered by the pericardium as it is located within the middle mediastinum. Um, it, uh, at first, the pulmonary trunk lies anterior to the aorta, then it passes posterior to it and to the left side to lie within the concavity of the aortic arch. Then it bifurcates to the right and left main pulmonary arteries. The right pulmonary artery, it passes horizontally from the midline below the carina to reach the right lung. It has a longer course in comparison to the uh, left pulmonary artery and it lies anterior to the right main bronchus. The anterior D, it uh, anterior to the uh, right pulmonary artery lies uh, the superior division uh, of the um, the right superior division of the uh, pulmonary vein, the ascending aorta, and the inferior vena cava. Superior division of pulmonary artery. No, no. The right superior pulmonary vein lies okay. anterior uh -huh. to the right pulmonary artery. Okay. So if you think of it, the right main bronchus is shorter than the left. Mm -hmm. while the right pulmonary artery is longer, longer than the left. Okay. Yes. One is short, one is long. Yes, because the left the pulmonary artery, when it, uh, uh, it spirals over the uh, left main bronchus, uh, so it has a shorter course, and it is slightly higher in comparison to the uh, right side. That's why they call it epiarterial or hyperarterial. Mm -hmm. Yes, the yes, bronchus. yes. Which one is epiarterial? The uh, uh, left. The, the right, the right is hyperarterial, the left is hypoarterial. The right is hyperarterial, not hypo. Okay. It means hypo, but it's not hypo. It yes, I mean that. Yes, okay. okay. It is attached to the concavity, or the left uh, pulmonary artery is attached to the concavity of the aortic arch by the ligamentum arteriosum, and uh, the pulmonary arteries further subdivide into the segmental arteries that travel with the segmental bronchi for the most part on their uh, posterior lateral surface. The pulmonary arteries supply only the alveoli. The pulmonary veins, uh, they uh, also um, follow the intersegmental uh, septum, and there are two veins passing to each hilum from the lung tissue above and uh, below each oblique fissure. They enter the mediastinum slightly below and anterior to the pulmonary arteries. On the right side, there are three veins uh, uh, draining the right lung as there are three lobes, each one um, uh, entering from uh, a lobe. Uh, so uh, three uh, veins uh, leave the right lung and enter the left atrium. While on the, right, uh, on the left side, uh, the two pulmonary veins uh, unite and enter the left atrium as a single vessel. Uh, the bronchial arteries uh, are supplying the bronchi, the visceral pleura, and the connective tissue of the lungs. While the parietal pleura, we talked in the previous lecture, it's uh, supplied by the systemic circulation. They arise from the thoracic aorta uh, at the level of T5 in 90% of the cases, and at the level of T6 in 80% of the cases, also may arise from the subclavian uh, artery or from its internal thoracic branch. Uh, there are usually uh, one uh, right and two left uh, bronchial arteries. The tissues supplied by bronchial arteries drain to the bronchial veins or pulmonary veins. So these bronchial arteries, they are, the importance of them is that first they can be a source of hemoptysis. Mm -hmm. So we can embolize them and we need to know where they, where they are arising from. Yes. Can be one by one, two by one. Differs from it's they're very variable. Also, uh, there is variation, okay. yes, there is it's anatomical variation. Hi, first, second, uh, they are very important in case of pulmonary embolism, yes, because if they are big, adequate, there will not be pulmonary embolism.
partial. Mm -hmm. but if they are small and inadequate, there will be pulmonary infarction. So they, they are important in this matter. Yes. Okay. The bronchial uh, veins uh, have uh, two, uh, uh, two networks, the deep veins and the superficial bronchial veins. Uh, the uh, deep veins form a network of veins around the pulmonary interstitium and communicate freely with the pulmonary veins. They also form a bronchial vein trunk that drains to the pulmonary system. While the superficial bronchial veins, they drain to the azygous on the right side and to the accessory hemiazygous on the left side. The mediastinal um, uh, lymph node uh, of the uh, lungs uh, are, are uh, um, named according to uh, their position. Uh, within the lung substance, uh, we have the pulmonary nodes. Uh, the bronchopulmonary nodes are at the hilum. Uh, below the carina, we have the carinal nodes, and uh, just sub above the. We call it subcarinal usually. Okay. 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 And uh, just above the tracheobronchial junction, we have the uh, tracheobronchial nodes. And in both uh, sides of the trachea, we have the paratracheal nodes. And uh, they are arranged in the superficial and deep channels. The superficial plexus uh, beneath the pleura drain around the surface of the lungs and uh, the margins of the fissures to converge at the hilum and the bronchopulmonary nodes, while the deep channels drain with the pulmonary vessels toward the hilum. So the bronchopulmonary nodes will drain to the uh, tracheobronchial nodes, then to the paratracheal nodes, and then to the bronchomediastinal trunks. And that's why it's important to know this in cases of lymphangitis uh, carcinomatosa, mm -hmm. because the draining of the, pulmon of the pulmonary lymph yes. to the hilum will, you know, will be the cause of the lymphangitis carcinomatosa. When the lymph nodes are involved by a tumor, yes. the lymphatic drainage will stop, and malignant cells will accumulate in the lung. Mm -hmm. The radiographic features of the lung and uh, bronchial uh, tree, uh, the structures that we will comment on the PHS X-ray are the fissures, trachea, bronchi, and the pulmonary vasculature. The fissures are only seen if tangential to the beam. In the previous lecture, we talked about the main and the accessory fissures. The trachea, it is seen as a midline translucency that uh, in the lower part is slightly deviated to the right uh, side. The uh, right uh, tracheal wall uh, within uh, it forms the uh, right paratracheal uh, strip when it comes in contact with the uh, right side of the lung uh, in which both of, of them are uh, containing air and this paratracheal strip should not uh, be measured more than uh, three millimeter uh, in diameter. Also, in the left side, we have an uh, indentation that is caused by the aortic arch. The uh, bronchi uh, contribute very little to the lung markings on a PHS X-ray. The proximal bronchi uh, may, however, be seen if outlined by the lungs. The posterior segmental bronchi of the left upper lobe and those of the apical segments of both lower lobes are often seen end on. The right pair is higher than the left as the upper lobe bronchus comes off at a higher level on the right. The right main bronchus is oriented more vertically than the left. Uh, the pulmonary uh, vasculature account for most of the lung markings. The pulmonary trunk forms a part of the left border of the heart, as it's visualized here. This is the pulmonary trunk, forming the left border of the heart. And uh, the interlobar artery is seen lateral to the bronchus intermediate on the right side, and this is the interlobar artery that should not measure more than 16 millimeters.